Okay, so if you were absent, you want to definitely uh, read the blog so that you see examples of the project and understand what the project's all about. Here's how you're going to start it. It's file new. Project's going to be called your last name, your first name, and then line from a song. We're working with 8 inches by 10 inches for the size, so a width of 8, a height of 10, 150 for the resolution. I would set your background to transparent, probably, for this. If it's not, though, it's okay. Don't worry. It's no problem if you've already done it. And then now... We're going to want to put our grid lines that we make on separate layers. And that way, we'll be able to move them around. And it'll be a lot easier to adjust the lines to the pictures rather than to try to get the pictures to fit the lines. So you want to be able to slide them left and right and up and down. So if you have a white background layer, make an empty new layer. Since I already have an empty new layer, I'm just going to go straight onto this. And I'm going to use my rectangular marquee to have nice crisp lines. You don't want any feather here. You want it to be zero. You want style to be on normal. And now I'm going to draw a, my first line. And it can be a vertical or a horizontal. You can make it thick or thin. And you can always adjust these later, so you don't need to worry. We're going to use the paint bucket to paint into it. So. Hold down on the gradient, and you'll see your paint bucket. And then pick your color you want. And you can always change these later, too. So once you start using pictures, you might be using lines that are based on the colors in your pictures. Um, I'll start with black, and then I can paint that line in. Then I'm going to deselect. So select deselect or command D I'll make a new empty layer by clicking the new layer button and I'll make my next line and this time I'm gonna draw a vertical and then I'll paint that in and you can continue along that way you can also copy the lines but I'll just keep going with empty new layers and I'm just going to kind of guess right now as to what I might want. I'm probably going to be changing it up a lot because, you know, who knows what pictures I'll find. I'll go in and I'll deselect. The fact that they're all on their own layers gives me the ability to drag them, copy them. I can rotate them by command T, right? That's a free transform. If I want to have a line on a diagonal. Um, so you can do a lot as long as you're on separate layers. You can have lines, some lines that are over other lines. So say I wanted maybe a white line. So I'll I just copied a line by option dragging. Now I'm going to fill that line. So, and then I can drag it to the top of my layer step. If I wanted a light, a white line that crossed. If you want to make your lines thicker or thinner, just free transform them. So say I needed a really thick line. I'll do command T and then I'll make it large. Yes. How do you get the lines to go like diagonally? I just rotated. Oh, okay. So yeah, Command T and you can rotate or stretch bigger. So you probably don't want to hold Shift if you're trying to make a line fatter or thinner. Just you know, you're going to actually warp those lines into the shapes you want. Now, once you have a lyric that you want, and let me go to Safari again.
And I happen to find a song earlier, so I'll just use the same song. Um, so... This is a good line. So I'm going to copy it or highlight it first and then edit copy, edit, paste when I get into Photoshop or command C, right? It's going to copy for me. Then I'm going to go into Photoshop and I'm going to use my type tool and I'll click and then I'll paste command V. And this website puts more type than I want on there so let me get rid of some of it. Gives a little copyright thing. And then so now I'm good. I've got my first line. As I bring in more, depending on how many lines I want, I'm just going to go in and grab them and paste them in. To bring in pictures, I'm going to go and find something real quick here. Uh, nope. So I can go in and I can drag that picture in. And since the line is the civilized, the line is the civil wars and the uncivilized wars. So I went and got a picture of war. And then what I'm not going to do here, guys, is I'm not going to try to warp my picture to fit. So watch out for that because sometimes what I find is people do this kind of thing and they try to get their picture to fit and the picture ends up looking really horrid. Now that's an exaggeration there, but you don't ever want to warp the picture. So I'm going to undo all of that and say no. And instead I'm going to move the lines or I'm going to crop the picture. So. If I decide, well, you know, I really want this one to fit <coughs> right in here, I might move this line over. I'll probably put the picture under the lines, too. I'm going to shrink this line down a little bit. Actually, I could make it longer, and I could put it on top, too. Where do we find our thing that we downloaded? Your font? Yeah. In your download folder. And your download folder is if you go to the finder, that little happy face in the dock on the left side, you will see download. So now my picture is fitting nicely. Now if you need, say I wanted the picture to fit in a triangle shape, like this one. Uh, let's see, that doesn't work that well with this picture. Let me rotate it the other way. It would fit pretty well here. So I can also cut off the picture. Or just copy it into the right shape. So with this one, say I wanted it to fit within this area, this is what I would do. I would put the picture there, make it the right size, and then I'm going to use my polygonal lasso, and I'm going to draw around it like so, and I'll make sure I'm on my picture layer, and then I'm just going to copy-paste. So edit, copy, edit, paste, command C, command V, and I have two of these now, right? I've got the one that's the right shape here, and I've got my original. I can throw the original away. I don't need it. So now it's fitting within that triangle. But fitting those pictures under the lines is way easier. You don't have to be as accurate. You know, you can overlap the lines on top. So that's a good way to go.
And you guys know how to do adjustment, color <coughs> adjustment, so you can be doing that. Um, I'll talk more about that kind of thing as we get to it. You can make solid blocks of color this way if you want to. So if I make an empty new layer and use my rectangle marquee, I'm going to go in and I'm just going to draw that rectangle and then I'll use my paint bucket. And maybe I want to start introducing some color to this. Maybe some gray tones, blue-gray tones. So I'll use my paint bucket and I'll paint it in. That could be a place to put writing. Um, or I can also bring in textures. And this texture that is in the handout folder, by the way, there's a high-res texture folder there. Let me actually get one that works better with it. I don't really like that one. That was for my last demo. Let's see if I can find something better. Um, this one's nice. So I'll go ahead and I'll open it. And it's huge. I could shrink it way down or I can just grab a section. So I'm going to go in and just grab a piece. And I'll drag it in. And then I can put it in, you know, wherever I'm going to use it. And I'm going to try to balance out the color, the light, and the dark. So actually, maybe I'll use it up here. Since I already have this gray's tones, I'm sort of balancing by using them at diagonals. I might even have a little bit of gray on this down here, too. But if I have extra, you can cut it out with the rectangular marquee. So I'm just going to grab it, and I'll hit delete, being sure I'm on the right layer. Deselect. So I'm starting to fit things together using that grid as the structure. 